Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 Side Scroller series. In today's video we are going to be working on creating a simple little pillar that is going to destroy the player when it touches them. So it's going to go down from the sky and it's just going to crush them when it touches them. So let me go ahead and press play and show you exactly what we're going to be doing. Now this version that I'm created here for you just feel like a little preview for you guys isn't going to be how it's going to look, it's just going to show you the functionality. So let me show you, so when I get up to the top of my level here and and I get under here you can see I've got this little box here and it's floating up and down so what we're gonna be doing with this is when it actually floats down and touches the players head it's going to begin crushing them and it's gonna cause them to die they're gonna drop on the floor they're gonna fall down and it's really really awesome so let me go ahead and show you exactly how I've done this now this is all done with blueprints and matinee similar to the little platform that we created previously however there's also a little bit of blueprints to set up the functionality for killing the player and all of that good stuff so what I've done here is basically in my level blueprint is I've got a little sequence whereby when the player actually triggers the little volume that's with that box it's going to cast to the side scroller character set their health down to zero and lastly it's going to kill them in addition to that I've also got the do once node in here as well so that it doesn't keep hitting the player even after they've died which is really really important so let's just go ahead and dump it, jump into this and dive in so first things first I'm going to quickly delete all of my elements that I've got here that I've created already don't worry about doing this step as you won't have to do any of this um, there you are so I'm just deleting the code literally it's just those two bits it's quite simple so what we need to do then is first things first we need to actually choose a mesh for us to start moving to crush the player now I think there's a really nice one inside of the infinity blade grassland stuff if you go into the miscellaneous folder and then anywhere you like, so static meshes, let's take a look in here. Let's see if we can choose something to work with. Um, doesn't look too great for me for now. So I'm gonna go into this other folder, static mesh, and I'm gonna try and find a pillar looking thing that I can use to crush the player. So I've got this little column here and I think that's gonna look quite nice. So I'm gonna quickly drag this into the scene and check how it looks. And to me that looks like definitely something that could crush the player, so I'm going to be using that. So if you do want to find that asset, it's quite easy to get to. Once again, it's an Infinity Blade Grasslands, and then it's Environments, Miscellaneous, and then exo underscore uh, deco2, Static Mesh, and the file you're after is sm underscore exo door flame, door frame column 1. Bit of a mouthful, but anyway let's get started so in addition to the static mesh placed in our scene we also need a volume so that we can check whether or not the player is actually close to that object so having said that i'm going to go to my volumes tab on the left hand side and i'm going to add in a trigger volume once i've done that from there all i've got to do is move this column up to its start position for now i'm going to leave it about here that's about the player's height and then with the trigger volume, I don't want this to be super big, I literally only want this to be at the bottom of the column, so when the player actually touches just the bottom of the column, it's going to kill them. And I want this to be quite short as well, I don't really want too much margin for error. And there it is, I just want something thin like this, like a little pancake, and that will do for me for now. And I'm just going to leave this at the bottom of the column here. And that's it. Now the reason why I'm not using the overlap event on the whole column itself is because I only want it to be underneath so if they touch their head on it, whereas if I do the whole column it's going to do everywhere. So let's say they jump into the side of it, it wouldn't realistically crush them but it would with the logic here. So I'm just going to use this little thing here and that is perfect. Cool, so next thing that I'm going to do is I've actually got to create a matinee actor. So let's just go over to cinematics and then add matinee sequence. From there, we've got to create two groups. So the first group I've got to do with the pillar itself selected. So with this pillar selected, I've got to go ahead and create this group. So I'm going to drag this down a little bit and then in my little black section here, add new empty group and then I'm just simply going to call this pillar for now. And then the second group I'm going to add with the trigger volume selected is simply going to be called volume. And it's automatically changing the mobility of all of this stuff for us, which is quite nice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by animating the pillar. So I'm going to make this animation so it goes up and then, it's go then it goes down so it's quite easy to loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a movement track into here. So add new movement track 
and then over about two seconds or maybe even a second I want it to be quite quick I'm gonna have it down going down I'm gonna gonna and I'm gonna have it to crush the player so as you can see there it's moved down a little bit so if I press stop and play you can see it's crushing down on the player which is quite nice one other thing that I've got to do before I do actually animate it any further is I've actually got to quickly check to see whether or not the player is able to run underneath that when it's in its full position. So I'm going to quickly run through my game here and I'm going to jump on this little platform. I'm going to move up and I'm just going to quickly see if I can run underneath it. So let's see if we can do that. So I can run underneath it at the moment. It's in its full position. So I've got the, the go ahead there, so which means we can pretty much just continue. So I'm going to open up my matinee actor again. And then from here, after it's been down to its bottom position, I'm going to create another keyframe at two seconds, press enter to do that. And from there, I'm just going to move it back up to where it was. Now, the easiest way to do it is we've got this little line. So simply, I'm just going to move the little white bit up to the top of that line there. And if I press stop now in that position and then loop, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. Uh, the reason why it's looping here is because we need to drag out the little green section and there we are and we've got our simple little loop there and that's looking quite nice. Nice. Now all I've got to do is pretty much do the same thing with the volume. So select that, add a new movement track and then from there just create a keyframe at one second and then simply just move that down with the pillar just underneath it just like that making sure it's able to touch the player and then create another keyframe at two seconds this time and we're simply moving it back up to the start position. So if we stop and loop this, you can see it's all moving in one sequence together and it looks just how we want it to. So I'm going to stop that and I'm going to leave it exactly where it is now. So what I need to do is I actually need to open up my level blueprint now and actually get this working. So. What I'm going to do with my matinee actor, I'm going to quickly make sure that starts on level load so it's going up and down. And I'm also going to make sure this is set to loop as well. I'm going to press play and I'm just going to make sure it looks exactly how it should do. So I'm going to quickly get up there once again. And hopefully it should just be going up and down which is quite nice. Let's give it a couple of seconds. So there you are. And the pillar is just going up and down and with a little delay afterwards it'll go back down again which is quite nice so it gives the player that little duration to get through it now the reason why there is that little delay is because in the matinee actor there is the little end point in our animation so let me show you so the end point is over here at five seconds because we haven't got anything between two seconds and five seconds it's just going to do nothing so we've actually got about a three second delay there i actually quite like that so i'm going to leave it exactly how it is so moving on to the next bit then so click the little trigger volume of yours that you've got and then go into your level blueprint open that up and then from here we need to do a few things so with that trigger volume selected we need to type in and create a begin overlap event now what this is going to do is pretty much tell the engine when the player overlaps with this object. From here what I'm going to do is quickly cast to the side scroller character. Now the reason why I'm casting to it is because we need to reference it once again and obviously that is also the object that is going to be colliding with it and nothing else. We don't want anything else colliding with it setting it off accidentally. So once we've done this it's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do from there as side scroller character we are just going to call the def function that we created earlier and that literally should be everything for the simple system so when the player actually hits that it should kill them. We need to make one more change to that in a second and I'll explain exactly why we want to do it um, but I'm just going to show you visually so you can see it. So I'm going to jump up on here I'm going to get underneath my pillar and then in a couple of seconds it's going to work. So if we get under that, you can see it hit me in the face there, it knocked me down to the ground and that's all great. However, okay, it's a, probably not a great example there, but if the crushing pillar does come down again and it hits you in the face, basically what it's going to do is make you play the death animation again. So let me try and show you again and hopefully you will be able to see it. So give it a couple of seconds. So you didn't quite see it there, it pushed me out of the way. But anyway, the point being is it's going to keep playing the death animation. We only want this to happen once. So what I'm going to do is from the trigger volume, I'm simply going to type in do once. And then from there, I'm simply just going to join it up and that will make sure the whole thing only triggers once. So let's try that. So we press play. 
and then from there let's get up to it make sure it still works and then there's one other thing that I'm gonna do because basically at the moment when we do hit it you will notice the health bar doesn't go down to zero health so it looks like the player is still basically alive so what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to as side scroller character set player health and we're just gonna make sure this is set down to zero to make it more realistic and then just join that up in between the death just like that and this time hopefully when we test it it should work perfectly so let's just quickly run up and jump and get in there so come on there you are one last time And there we go, that's it. Our crushing pillar just hit the player down. He's got no health and that is working great. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for our crushing pillar system. I hope you have enjoyed it. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out.